What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made these. <sighs> Beautiful, smoky, tender, delicious, briskety, amazing brisket boudin stuffed quail. <sighs> Coming up. These are some quail. Pat them dry. And if you've never seen a quail before, they're a super fun thing to play around with on the old barbecue pit because basically they're just tiny little chickens. They're like a whole chicken the size of a chicken thigh. And these ones are semi boneless, meaning that the rib cage and the spine and everything is removed, but we still have bone in legs and bone in wings. I don't know how they go about doing that. I don't want to know, but I'm just really glad I don't have to do it because it seems like a pain in the butt. What that does is allows all this inner space right here to be stuffed with whatever you like. And if you're a fan of Leroy and Lewis since the olden days, you know we used to stuff these with mac and cheese and throw them on the pit, and it was absolutely fantastic, but it was a pain in the butt to make. So today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be stuffing these with some brisket boudin, because what doesn't sound good about that, you know? Some brisket, some rice, and some veg, all stuffed into a little chicken. Throw it on the old chud box with some rub, get some nice crispy skin, some nice quail meat, and this makes for a great little dish. But before we get stuffing these things up, we need to go ahead and make some boudin. And now into our very large carbon steel pan. Here we're gonna go in with probably way too much butter. Ooh, thing heats up quick. And once that is all bubbly wobbly, we're gonna go in with our onions. Let those soften up for just a few minutes before we go in with our green bell pepper, our jalapeno, and our celery. And now we're gonna just let these all cook down and soften up a little bit. And once that's cooked down, everything is nice and soft. We're starting to get some color on the onions. We're gonna go ahead and hit this with some Tony C's, add some nice saltiness and some nice Cajun flavor, a little bit of spice. And now we're gonna kill the heat and go in with all of our garlic. And just let this cook for another minute or two until that garlic is nice and fragrant, lightly toasted, but definitely not burnt because it can get bitter real quick. Next up, brisket. This brisket I cooked, I don't know, a week or two ago. Pulled it out of the freezer, threw it right into the sous vide bath from the freezer, and let it come up to temp. And let's see how it looks. Ooh, nice and jiggly. Still looks pretty good to me. And you definitely don't have to slice this. I'm just trying to make some chopped beef out of it. So I'm just kind of giving it a rough chop against the grain and then in the other direction. And I sous vide this at like 185 overnight. So this thing got super duper shreddy. For some perfect chopped beef. Love it. Might as well do this lean while we're here too. Beautiful big pile of chopped brisket. Gotta love that. Ooh. And now to make our boudin. We're gonna start out with about Yay, amount of rice. It's about, I don't know, three cups uncooked. And I'm gonna tell you right now, folks, I don't have a recipe for boudin. I just kinda like to eyeball it. But this is just some plain white rice cooked it in the old rice cooker. Nothing fancy here. And then we're gonna go in with all of our sauteed veg. This is why I cooked these vegetables in so much butter. It's gonna help add some fat to the party, make things a little more cohesive and stick together. And now we're gonna start chipping in brisket until we have the rice to brisket ratio that we're after. And really, that can be whatever you want. You know, from a restaurant perspective, this is a great way to amplify the amount of brisket you have if you go really rice heavy, because rice is a lot cheaper than brisket. Not sure if you knew that. Or if you're like me and you want a really delicious boudin that's like 50-50 meat to rice, this is where you can dial that in. Ah, a little more brisket, yeah. And right about there is looking pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my fresh green onions here, just for a little bit of freshness, add some color. Go ahead and give that a taste, I just did. Needs a little bit more salt and a little bit more spice. Cause remember we gotta flavor all that rice in there too. So I'm gonna just keep adding Tony C's until it tastes the way I want it to taste. And at this point, this is pretty much done, except it's still kind of crumbly. We really want this to have a little bit more bind to it. And there's two routes you can go. You could add some more fat or you could add some liquid. I am gonna do both, starting with a nice healthy 
healthy drizzle of some beef tallow. And you may be thinking, Brad, you're a pig. And yeah, you're right. But also, we got a lot of rice in here and there's not much fat compared to a normal sausage at this point. So gotta add some moisture. And I'm also happy to be making a fresh batch of chicken stock right now. So throw some of that in there as well. And that should make things start sticking together a little bit better. And just like that, taste and adjust. And our boudin, our brisket boudin, I need to call it brisket boudin because this is by no means traditional boudin. But it's a rice sausage made with meat, so I'm gonna call it boudin. And it's now officially done. All right, folks, we got our brisket boot in, we've got our quail, and now comes the somewhat tedious part of trying to stuff these things. So simply enough, we got this nice little cavity in there, gonna go right through the butt. Actually, I think we're gonna go through the neck. The hole seems a little bit bigger. So we're just gonna grab ourselves some boudin, make ourselves a nice little ball about the size we think we need. Because of that extra fat in there, this is bonding together and holding together lovely. And then we're just gonna do our best to get this thing as full as we can without tearing the skin, which can be a pain. But I gotta tell you, I was dreading this part. But that's because I used to have to do like 50 of these things full of mac and cheese, but I only have five to do today, so it's really not that bad. And you can really fill these things up too. That's looking pretty good to me. Kind of shape it, tuck everything in. Be sure to fold our wing tips back just so it looks nice. And there we have a nice, beautiful, plump boudin stuffed quail. So all we have to do now is repeat a few more times. And if you can't find quail, if you're in Austin, Central Market usually carries them. I went, they were out. So I went down to Longhorn Meats down by the Chud Shop Meat Market and they had them there. You can also get them online or any like the nicer, fancier kind of grocery stores, you should be able to find them. And the fun part is, you can really stuff them with whatever you want, you know? I might do another one of these videos closer to the Super Bowl where I stuff these full of buffalo chicken sausage, cook them nice and crispy, toss them in sauce at the end. Sounds good to me. Beautiful. And because I made so much extra boudin, I figured we might as well get some linked up too. Oh, it's been a minute since I did this. I forgot how weird it feels. Warm, chunky, ricey. Fatty, just bizarre. Tasty stuff though. And just like that, we've got a whole bunch of some beautiful boudin links. I'm telling you folks, you gotta make this if you haven't before. They are so unique, so tasty, love it. With that being said, we got some quail to cook, so let's go ahead and fire up the pit. Before we go ahead and throw these on, let's go ahead and hit them with some good old fashioned chud rub. On sale now, and just a nice light coat, and that boudin is fully flavorful, and there's really not much quail meat to speak of, but you know, add some good color, add some nice flavor to the skin, cause why not? They looked pretty scrawny at first, but now they're looking nice and plump. And don't forget the sides. Come on. Beautiful. On the pit they go. Got this pit rocking right about 300 degrees, and we're just gonna let these guys cook away. Beautiful. We'll check back in in a little bit. All right, we're about half an hour into this cook. Let's see how we are looking. Woohoo, nice and smoky. A lot of that fat is dripping out of these quails, giving us extra flavor when that hits the coals. And let's just go ahead and give these guys a flip. Because again, everything is already cooked except for the very small amount of quail skin. So we're just trying to crisp that up and make sure everything is warmed through nicely. Oh yeah, beautiful color on these. Also got a few boudin links on there, just because why not? And oh God, they're looking so nice and plump. Gotta love that. And same with these, heat them through and crisp up the casing. It's really all we're after. Probably give these another 20, 30, and then we'll check back in. Woo! All right, these things are looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit them with the old Texas Pete spray bottle. Add a little extra flavor, a little hot sauce glaze. Oh yeah, beautiful crispy skin on there. That's exactly what we're talking about, folks. Beautiful color on that skin. Well, might as well hit these with a little hot sauce too. A little extra color. I'm thinking these are done. Might let that hot sauce cook on for about five minutes and then we'll probably pull them off and uh, slice on in. And there we go, folks. Fresh off the grill, a beautiful pile of some boudin links and some crispy skin hot sauce glazed brisket boudin stuffed quails. And they are just looking so good. I just, I, I gotta dive in. First things first, let's take a look at this boudin in its normal state. Cooked up beautifully. Got some nice color on there. Really plump, nice and firm. It really feels like a nice sausage. So doesn't slice like one though, because it's full of rice. That's what we're looking at. Beautiful boudin. Love the texture on that. I probably should let this rest a little longer. It's still very hot. Oh, that smells so good. Whew. Very nice. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. Hot. 
the texture of boudin is not describable. It sounds weird, you know, like cooked kind of mushy rice with cooked soft brisket with softened veg, but the skin is nice and crispy. It's nice and smoky. The flavor is out of control. Highly recommend it, folks. If you've never made boudin, it comes together so quick, very easy to make, and you can tailor it exactly how you want to make it to your own flavor profile while you're making it because everything's cooked. You can just eat the mix as you're going. That is lovely, though. <clears throat> but this is the real star of the show, folks. A beautiful little plump bird stuffed with brisket, beautiful crispy skin all the way around on that. And I think it's time to dive in. And to do so, I'm just gonna slice it right in half. Nothing to it. Oh, there it is, folks. Beautiful consistency on that boot and everything's staying together really nice. A lot of rice, a lot of brisket. You can see the veg in there. And it's all covered in that beautiful skin. Ooh, love that. And again, the only bones in this thing are the legs and the wings, which means we can cut this one more time, right like this. And it's kind of like chicken wings, right? Here's a portion, just gnaw that off the bone. Here's a portion, gnaw that off the wing. And like, talk about a perfect football food. Show up with this little brisket boudin quail lollipop. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Look at that little guy. What a beautiful bite. Mmm. Mmm. I just love how it's all staying together. Gotta add that extra fat, folks. It's like the regular boudin sausage, but instead of a sausage casing, it's crispy, chud rubbed, direct heat chicken skin. It's phenomenal. You got this little bone to gnaw on. How cute. <clears throat> this is so much better than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, it's a chicken full of brisket. What's not to like here? I know they can be kind of a pain to make, stuffing a bunch of quail. You got brisket boudin stuffed into a hot sauce encrusted chicken skin bite. Pass these around, you'll be the king of the party. Mm, mm, that was so good. Such a pleasant bite. <clears throat> I'm gonna eat all these, tell you what. Guys, you have to make these. Find some quail, I'm telling you. Mm. And the possibilities. You might have to make it quail Thursday from here on out. Keep stuffing these birds with random stuff. Mm. Direct heat, crispy skin. You just can't beat it. Mm -hmm. All right, before I destroy the rest of these birds, I think it's time for the official taste test. Boneless, of course. Yeah, but, but, but. All right, y'all, that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic brisket boudin stuffed quail. I highly recommend giving this recipe a try. If you've never made boudin before, it's a super easy and fun thing to do, and you can do it with whatever leftover barbecue you've got. Comes together real quick, and you can tailor it to whatever flavor profile you like. And then stuffing it into a quail is just a whole nother level. Also, like I said several times, you can stuff whatever you want into a quail and make some really cool barbecue dishes. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button that YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!